Welcome to Hope Today. I'm Amanda and my friends here, Angela and Sydney. We have a packed program just for you. And you know, we're going to bring God's word to life, Sydney, with our guests. Yes, we surely are. And we have a question for you. Have you ever been into your zodiac sign in astrology? Well, today's guest, Troy Brewer, will unveil why the zodiac is the greatest deception of our time and how those constellations and so many more are the greatest revelation of God's plan for Jesus to save humanity. You know, Angela, I am super excited for this because I am a former one that used to know my sign. I was a Pisces, all these things. And once we understand the truth of God, that how he's revealing things in all things, whoo, it will set you free and change your life forever. I cannot wait because he's the creator. So he's the one who designed it. He gets to define it. So today we get to hear the true definition, the true reason why he put these things in the heavens. <laughs> so exciting. You know, identity is a big thing right now. And the enemy is trying to confuse people as to who they are with pronouns or with gender. And it's like, no, God is our divine designer. And today, maybe you're that one who's been struggling with your identity. Uh, today's program is for you, but I want you to know that we do have prayer partners standing by. And at the end of our program or during our program, if at any moment you have that drawing of the spirit and you desire to give us a call. We have prayer partners that would love the opportunity to pray with you. They'll give you the word of God. They'll speak identity to you. And it's so exciting, Sid, that we have the opportunity. You know, one thing I just love about topics like these, we need to address the culture. I think oftentimes on the church, we're on like the defense, but we need to be up and saying and being around people and saying, this is what God is saying. This is what God is speaking. And you know, the one thing I just love about this conversation that we're going to be talking about, you know, the constellations, the signs in the skies, like God is on the move and he is speaking and he is trying to reveal himself to his sons and daughters and to all of us. And so I'm just really excited for this conversation because I just want to encourage you, if you are a Christian and you are still looking at your reading your horoscope or reading your zodiac, I mean, I think we can all say we have been there at one time. Maybe you are. This conversation is paramount for your understanding of why it is a deception, why it is a scheme of the enemy, why the enemy has tried to plant things. That was my testimony. I was in a season where I was in 17 magazine, I could tell you a sign, who you'd be connected with, all of these things, but it was because I didn't know that God was still speaking, that God was speaking through the sky, that God was speaking through his prophets. So we're just super excited for this conversation and we wanna jump into it right now. You know, for centuries, people of ancient civilizations understood the signs and the stars. And our guest today, Troy Brewer, is on a mission to reveal the connection between constellations and the redemption of humanity through Jesus. In his latest book, Looking Up, Understanding Prophetic Signs and the Constellations, and how the heavens declared the glory of God. He shares the dramatic truth about the cosmos. Troy, we are so glad to have you with us today. Well, hello, Sydney. I bless you in Jesus' name. Thank you. Oh, well, God bless you too. And you know, Troy, we just want to start off and just saying, how did you begin to be hungry about understanding what the constellations and how they point to the redemption of Jesus? Well, when I was a little boy, my daddy would come and get me on the weekends and he would take me to the planetarium and I became fascinated as a child with constellations and stars and that kind of stuff. And I grew up in rural Johnson County, Texas, so you could see the stars really well. And then when I got saved, when I was 19 years old, I began to open up the word of God. And when I opened up the word, I began to see that the same stories that are in the Bible are also in the heavens because the author is the same. And I was like, oh my gosh. And I, was, I started asking everybody, do you know that this story is actually in heaven? And people would say, no, God doesn't do that. And I'd say, yes, he does. And in fact, he always has been. And then I began to look up the names of all the stars and they began to show the handiwork of the Lord. And then I began to look up how many light years away they are. And those numbers also lined up with biblical numbers. And I was like, it's crazy. The Bible is written in the heavens. You know, I just, I love what you say, yet there's always on earth a heavenly testimony proclaiming the goodness of God. And so can, let's just d dive into this because I know so many people are so curious how the stars proclaim of the goodness of Jesus. And so can we start with the zodiac and how it's such a deception? Can you break some of that down of how God is behind it all? And it's a false thing that so many people have believed the lie of the enemy. Yeah, you know, the Bible says in Romans, it says that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were they thankful, but they became vain in their imaginations and professing themselves to wise, they, they became fools. And then it says they, they turned the glorious things of God into four-footed beasts and yada, yada, yada. It's actually talking about that. It's actually talking about the Zodiac. 
Now, I do want to tell you that the Zodiac is not a bad thing. God Almighty created the Zodiac just like he created time, like he created everything else. And he placed those stars in our firmament, 88 constellations and 12 that the sun actually travels through. And the Bible refers to that as the tabernacle of heaven. So these things are not bad. What's bad is when you don't glorify God in the midst of it. And the devil loves to get into stuff and say, hey, man, I'm going to show you this. I'm going to show you that. And I'm going to tell you this. I'm going to give you a leg up and I'm going to give you this advantage. Just walk away from Jesus in it. When actually the Maseroth, as the Bible calls it, the Bible, the Hebrew word for the Zodiac is the Maseroth. And so it actually gives us and demonstrates God's plan for every single one of our lives. So it's no wonder that the devil would say, hey, listen, I want you to look at this and you can use this for filthy gain and for selfish intent. And because you think that you're going to be smarter than the people around you, when actually it's all about us lining up with God's heart. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's really bad. And one of the reasons said that it's, it's bad is because if you receive the if you receive the counsel of the people who typically tell us what the zodiac means, number one, it's going to be out of sync. They say that it begins at Aries and it ends at Pisces, and that's not true. It actually begins at Virgo and it ends at Leo. And it's like, well, why don't they know the beginning and the end? Because they don't know the person who is the beginning and the end. So if you receive the counsel of people who are into the zodiac, they're actually going to keep you out of sync. And Deuteronomy 28 defines that as a curse. He says, in the morning, you'll say, I wish it was evening. In the evening, you'll say, I wish it was morning. So there's actually a curse involved in receiving that counsel. No, I know where it begins. It ends with the seed of the woman promise of the book of Genesis, which is Virgo the virgin. And it ends with Leo, the line of the tribe of Judah, which is King Jesus coming back, which is the book of Revelation. So can you repeat that again? Because like, I think some we're trying to glean this in. So can you break down Virgo? And then can you break down Leo? I sure can. So Virgo the Virgin is the promise of the seed of the woman. So she has a star in her belly button that means the branch. And that's one of the man, that's one of the messianic names of King Jesus. And by the way, she's a virgin and she has a seed in her. That's impossible. So it's like, okay, wait just a minute. This was the plan all the time. And it was actually in the heavens that it says, yes, there will be a Messiah and he will enter into humanity. And then the names of all the stars actually give more and more and more details of the story. And what we find is the very first messianic promise in the Bible is the promise of the seed of the woman or the coming of the branch. And that is Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. So the very first of those constellations that the sun travels through, right, the very first one is indeed Virgo. And it means that God Almighty will literally enter into humanity. And then the last one of the 12 is Leo. And Leo is the lion of the tribe of Judah. And his the, the star that represents his heart is actually 77 light years away. And like, why? Why is that a big deal? Because Jesus is the 77th from Adam. In case you're, you know, you're not sure who the lion of the tribe of Judah is, all you have to do is look at the stars and look at the names of the stars, and it absolutely identifies him. When he comes back, he will rule and reign with power and authority. And this is the plan of redemption that Jesus declares he will accomplish. And in fact, he, he is. Okay, let's break down some more because it is so, so good. So can you talk to us about Libra, which represents the scales? Can you talk to us about okay. that? Okay. All right. So Ladybug, if it's okay with you, I'll just, I'll just go through all 12 signs. Just boom, let's boom, go. boom. Is yeah. that okay? Yeah, okay. So it goes like this. First, this is what God Almighty declares in the heavens every single night. And it doesn't matter what, what language you speak. Everybody sees these stars and they know these pictures. Number one is Virgo. There will be a Messiah and he will be born of a virgin woman. Number two is Libra. He's going to be a redeemer and he's going to set the scale straight, right? After that is Scorpio. Oh, death, where's your sting? He's going to take on death and he's going to die. After that is Sagittarius. He's going to rise up from the dead and he's going to conquer death and hell and slap death for all of us. After that is Capricorn. Once he lays down his life with his 
body, a new life of living fish or the people of God is going to come out of him. After that is Aquarius. The Holy Spirit is going to be poured out upon all of his people. After that is Pisces. There will be a new bond of covenant. The old, the, the old covenant and the, new te- and the New Testament becoming one. After that is Aries. His kingdom will come. His will will be done. After that is Taurus the bull. Jesus is coming back with unstoppable momentum and nothing can stop him. After that is Gemini. When we see him, we will be like him. After that is Capricorn. He will never let go of his beloved possession and after that is leo the line of the tribe of judah and jesus is coming back to rule and reign with all of us that is going on within the zodiac every single night oh man i just feel like we are all slightly mind blown right now and it's like so thank you so much for going through the 12 and why would you say troy like now more than ever that it is paramount that we understand what these constellations truly represent and because of all the lies and deceptions that we have just, so many of us have believed for so long. Well, it's like anything else. I mean, it's just like our sexuality. There's so much lies and, and deception going on with our sexuality. There's so much lies and deception going on with, with so many things. And Jesus himself, this is the words of King Jesus in Luke chapter 21. He said that there will be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars. And he said, there will be. In other words, he was speaking into this day in case people were saying today, well, the Lord doesn't do that anymore. That's not what Jesus said. Jesus said that as we ramp up towards revelation, that there will be more and more and more signs within the heavens. And he says, now, whenever you see these things begin to happen, he says, look up, lift up your heads because your redemption draws near. That story of redemption is about to be complete. And I think that in these last days, as we see that men's hearts are filling them for fear when they see the things that are coming up on the earth, that there's a remnant of the people of God that's like, yeah, I see all these bad things, but also what I can see is Jesus is saying, don't give up, don't give up. I'm speaking, I'm alive, I'm ruling, I'm reigning. You don't have to sit under the doctrines, the doctrines of demons. Get your head out of the lap of media Delilah and look up, right? And walk in the spirit of the Lord. Yeah. I think that um, this deception of the Zodiac and all of this, and literally it's just another addiction and it's another form of bondage. But the story that is in the Zodiac actually says how Jesus is going to set us free. So which will we have? What is it that's going to impact us? How should we own the impact and what is it that we're going to look off into? As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Amen. That is so, so good. You know, another thing is like the North Star Polaris that is actually represents the Trinity. Can you break that down for us too? Yeah. So everything in the heavens circles Polaris. And that, by the way, is the will within the will. So whenever you look at, whenever you look at Polaris, everything is circling it. And then the Zodiac, those 12, is another will within the side of that, right? It's like, oh my goodness. Okay. So Polaris is a North Star. It's so beautiful. It's incredible. It is the 50th brightest star, which means whenever you look at it, it's easy to dismiss. And you're just like, it's just one more of so many stars, but it's the most important star. It actually represents the throne of King Jesus. Everything circles it and says, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and who is and who is yet to come. And then the one like, well, how in the world are we supposed to find this thing? Well, you have to look at the seven stars. And what is the seven stars? It's, you know, it's, it's the Big Dipper. It's, it's Ursa Major. And it points out, what are the seven stars? It's the seven churches. What's the job of the seven churches? To point people towards the throne of King Jesus. And once you see the throne of King Jesus or Polaris or the North Star, you will never be lost again. Amen. Never be lost again in the natural and also within, with, within the spiritual. Um, I love Polaris. And again, it's the 50th brightest star within within all the heavens. And 50 means jubilee. It means that you'll actually be set free. All the stars are named. All the stars are numbered by God Almighty himself. And the Bible says that three different times. Wow. And can you even, I've known in your book, there was like a picture of like the stars with the seven churches that if you actually put them on the map, it was like the seven churches. Can you talk about that constellation? Yes, ma'am. That's actually Pleiades. And Pleiades is in the neck of Taurus the bull. And again, it represents the seven churches. Now, when we know that when Jesus comes back, he's coming back with his church. We are yoked to him, right? 
Now, there's this amazing thing about the, about the Pleiades. And, you know, the Romans in their mythos, they actually called it, and the Greeks actually called it the seven sisters. That's what they called it. And it represents the seven churches. Again, it's in the, it's in the unstoppable momentum yoked to Jesus himself. Whenever you see Taurus, you can only see from about his shoulders up because he's breaking through right? What you can see is Pleiades. If you take Pleiades and if you hold the constellation Pleiades and if you put it on a screen and then if over the constellation Pleiades or under it, you put the seven churches of Asia, an actual ancient map that has the seven churches, boom, it lines up. Like what? The seven churches in the book of Revelation actually line up with the Pleiades, except for one. And you're like, well, which one is it? Well, there is one that's missing, and, it, and it's the church in Ephesus. And like where Ephesus was, that star is missing. It was there until about 800 years ago, and it's supernova and it got super bright, and then it disappeared. What's well, funny, because that's the church that Jesus says, if you don't return back to your first love, I will remove my candlestick. And that star lost its light exactly as Jesus spoke to the church that represents that star. Wow, there's so much. Yeah, it's a wow. It's, there's so much <laughs> revelation to unpack. And Troy, can you just take a moment these next couple minutes just to minister, just to speak into our audience about what God is really placing in your spirit for this season that we need to wake up, we need to look up as the body of Christ. Oh, friends, I want to just tell you wherever you're watching all over the planet Earth that Jesus sees you, Jesus knows you, Jesus loves you. And as you look around in this day, you can see all these bad things, just the lawlessness, the chaos, the hatred, the things that people that Jesus actually prophesied we would see. But there's something else that you have to see. You've got to be able to see the goodness of the Lord because God Almighty is wildly demonstrating his goodness. God Almighty is wildly demonstrating and speaking his intentions towards you. He will not leave you. He will not forsake you. Own the impact of what it is that you see. Number one, you have to be able to look intently and go, wait, I purpose to see Jesus and I'm going to see his word and I want to see what God says and I want to walk in those things. Secondly, you have to own the impact. All of the heavens today is declaring such glorious things. You know, there was, actually a, there was actually a huge planetary alignment that took place last year on June the 24th. And when me and all my friends gathered before the sun came up to watch it, and the first time it's happened in hundreds of years, the way that it happened, we were all like, I wonder what kind of glorious day this is going to be. And then, boom, Roe v. Wade was overturned that day. And it was like, wow, the heavens do declare the glory of God. It actually happened on June the 24th, and that's the day that represents uh, John the Baptist. It's the John the Baptist day where the baby leaped inside of the womb. I want to just encourage you and tell you this, God, you have so many good reasons to be hopeful. And if you can't find any, it's because you're under the influence of a lie. Any place where we are hopeless, we are always under the influence of a lie. I would encourage you in Jesus' name, come before the Lord and repent and say, God, I'm tired of being under the influence of a lie. Speak to me. I give you my heart and I have a yes in my spirit and watch what he does. Mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And if you've just heard that and just really speaking to your spirit, give us a call at our prayer line at 888-665-448 through. It is time for all of us to recognize the lies and the deceptions that we've been under and come into the truth because Jesus is the way the truth and the life. Troy, thank you so much for just this time that you've unpacked, that you've unveiled, that you've broken down so many things that we are just forever changed by what you shared with us today. Thank you, Sydney. It was a great honor. It was a great honor to have you. And the book is called Looking Up, Understanding Prophetic Signs in the Constellations and How the Heavens Declare the Glory of God. Ladies, whoo, was that like a glory bus that just rolled through and just so much Revelation. Angela, what are your takeaways and thoughts? I am telling you, my mind is reeling in God's goodness that every part of redemption was written in the heavens before it ever was. And that everything that surrounds you speaks of his love for you. He is continually communicating his goodness and his unending mercy for you. So look up as Troy has charged us. 
Today's scripture is focused on exactly that. It comes from Psalm 19, one through four. The heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament shows his handiwork. Day unto day utters speech and night unto night reveals knowledge. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Their line has gone out through all the earth and their words to the end of the world. There is always something the Lord is communicating to us in all of creation. Don't you agree, Amanda? <laughs> oh my goodness, this is powerful. I don't know if y'all had your notebook, but I took some <laughs> notes. I'm, I'm like, woo, Jesus is speaking. You know what it does though, is my confidence level yes. in who he is. I could feel it just rising. There is nothing, brothers and sisters, that we need to worry about. So today, I encourage you to just lay at the foot of the cross, knowing that God is God Almighty. I, I'm in awe. I'm in awe of how the heavens, see, we don't see this. This is what I feel in my spirit. There's so many times in life that we don't even know we've been believing a lie. We've been yes. walking in deception. This is just a little thing. So I had a whole allergy thing going on and I could hardly breathe. And so I started to take this medicine and my allergies opened up. But what I realized is that I'd been combating allergies for longer than the, the week that I had those symptoms because my nasal opened up and I'm like, I haven't breathed like this in such a long time, but the significance of that is how over time when things are little by little, yep. you don't even realize it. And what I feel yes. today is like God opened up yes. the nasal area and we as believers can breathe in God. He is our breath. Yes. We can place our full confidence in him. Yes. He will not fail you. I don't know what you're walking through, yes. but I promise you, on God's word, he sees, he knows, he will answer and he will not fail you. Put your trust in Jesus and just breathe him in, in his fullness. It's a beautiful thing, Sydney. Whew, it is truly wow. a beautiful thing. And for me today, like I just think, I wish my 20, 16 year old self knew all of this. Yes. Because I think a lot of us, we have been breathing in things, we have been ingesting things, yes. we've been t partaking in things, having no idea yes. the lies. And it just builds up over time yes. and time. I remember like, just even when he was, when Troy was breaking down about Pisces and Sagittarius and Libra, all, yes. of, all of the Zodiac, it is just mind blowing. Because you know what y'all? The reality is there is a huge generation that we can all identify with this, yes. that the enemy has used us as such a great deception to lure people away, to make people believe that God isn't speaking. You know why people are in the new age? You know why people look to the zodiac and astrology? Because they don't know that there's a God that still speaks, that there's a God yes. that is still moving and they're hungry for something more that they're desperate. And so today, if that is you, if you were like me at one point and you are, you're reading your horoscope, you're digging it, you're going to the tarot card reader, whatever it may be, let this be a sign to you. It is false, it is fake, and it doesn't work. I'm gonna share this with you one time. I got my palm read. I went to this, it was in Ocean City, Maryland on my senior trip. And I remember this woman started giving me words. Guess what? None of them came to pass. And I am so grateful for that experience because I realized, like she said, I was gonna get married at 27 and have four kids. Well, honey, I wasn't married at 27 and I don't have four kids and praise Jesus because you know what? God had a different plan and a different path for me. So if this is you today, I just really feel like this is a wake up call. Throw away those tarot cards, throw away those crystals, get rid of the horoscope, stop checking it, stop reading it and know that God still speaks. There are prophets that still yes. speak where God will speak through them, that God wants to speak to you right now. Yes. That God has enabled all of us to hear the voice of God. And maybe you're in a church that doesn't believe that, and I'm sorry about that, but today is a day that we wanna let you know that the good news of Jesus is he's alive and he's still speaking and he's still walking among us. And we want you to be free because we want you to walk in the truth and the fullness that all God has called you to be. There's just moments I feel like sometimes on this program that we forget that it's, we're even on TV yes. and you just lose sight of 
<laughs> the time and what's going on. But this is truly a moment, I believe, Angela and Amanda. It is. You know, I think when you even were saying, Amanda, how you get comfortable and you get used to it, and we have been surrounded, and in this world, we know it's a fallen state, and we get surrounded by things that look destitute and desperate and hopeless. But even as Troy said, hopelessness is the greatest lie because all of creation declares the hope of Christ Jesus. If you just look up and look around you, you can see a message written in the stars over your life. You can look up and breathe in the air and know that the wind of the Spirit is blowing and moving on your behalf, but believe the truth of what God says. All of these places, the things that the culture tries to inundate us with, to getting us to believe that these lesser things are going to satisfy us, but yet it leaves us more empty. Today there is hope because the Jesus, the creator of the heavens and the earth declares it so. He wrote it in the stars. He declares it in your life. And he will go to the ends of the age sharing his goodness with you. I just believe, you know, there are parents out there that have had children that are in that same place that Sydney had talked about, and they're feeding on all of this garbage that the world is giving to them. And we don't always know how to pray. Well, I can tell you, I encourage you to get this book and get ourselves in the understanding because we have light that we can share with them instead of being like, oh, I just don't believe that and like ignoring it. Well, it's not gonna go away, but we can actually address it. You can take this program as a tool. We will put it out on YouTube. It'll be there for you to share with your friends and your family. Let them be set free by the power of God that those 12 signs, they have so much more to do with than the horoscopes that we read. It has to do with the saving, redeeming power and love of Jesus Christ. The skies, the heavens are crying out the glory of God. Will we just look up and see it? And will we care enough to take someone else with us? Because it's great for us to see ourselves. We're on fire here. We're just like, woo, it's the glory of God for real. But now we've got to take this message to the world because so many other people, they need to know they can look up and they can receive the goodness, the redemption of Jesus Christ. He's drawing you. I believe God has even had you sitting watching this program and maybe you've never watched Hope Today today, ever. Today's your day. God wants to talk to you. He desires to fill you. That emptiness that you have been longing for, it's a place where only Jesus can fill. And he wants to fill that place. So today I encourage you to surrender all, to just ask Jesus, to be your Lord, ask him to come in, ask the Holy Spirit to fill you and ask Jesus to forgive you. The amazing thing about redemption is it is a plan that we don't deserve because he blots out all of our sin, all of the stain. He said your garments go from being so messed up to white as snow. So today put your faith in Jesus. On tomorrow's Hope Today, be transformed by the steadfast love of God. Author and speaker Carol Engel Avriette dives deep into scripture and helps you to connect with the true heart of God by studying 12 of his most extravagant characteristics. That's tomorrow on Hope Today. Cornerstone Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.